Today in the Moto IQ garage, we're going to be installing Radium Engineering's fuel hanger search tank in this FDRX7. Now, for those of you that have had a chance to check out our Nissan 350Z installation of the Radium Engineering fuel cell search tank kit, you'll know that their products are very thorough and their kits have basically every single part you're gonna need. So today, we're gonna have Mike Kojima, our editor-in-chief, go through all the detailed parts of the kit, and then we're also gonna show you how the installation goes. So putting a cool fuel system in your FD has never been easier thanks to Radium. So Radium makes a kit so you can drop in a high-performance fuel pump the right way into your FD. This kit uh, works for any of the FDRX7s, and that's uh, in the US, it's uh, from 93 to 95, and in Japan, it's from 92 all the way up to 2002. The first thing we have is Radium's fuel hanger surge tank. The FD has a really large uh, top plate on their tank, which gives plenty of room to have an internal surge tank. The surge tank holds um, four tenths of a gallon of fuel, that's more than enough to keep even the most powerful engine running for a few minutes. You might be wondering, how does the fuel get in the surge tank? So in the FD, there's a, uh, like a boxy baffle. And uh, what Radium does is they wall off one part of that boxy baffle uh, and put this uh, assembly in, which holds the lift pump. Now the lift pump is a low pressure pump that feeds the surge tank. It's basically the same pump that feeds the high pressure side, but since it's uh, not deadheaded, it can move a lot of volume of fuel. Now the pump sits here in this bracket, which also uh, works as a baffle. There's a uh, one-way check valve. Uh, this ball moves back and forth and prevents fuel from coming out of this baffled area, and it assures that fuel is always around the pickup of the uh, lift pump. During acceleration, the check valve opens, allowing fuel into the baffled area. During deceleration, it closes so it doesn't allow any fuel to escape. From the uh, baffled area in the, uh, in the stock uh, pickup box, the fuel goes into the bottom of the radium surge tank. Um, there, there's a fitting for it. It plums in there real easy. And uh, there's a diffuser inside that de-aerates the fuel. The fuel comes from the lift pump and it goes through this 24-hole uh, diffuser in there. Might be a little hard to see, but the diffuser makes, sh makes sure that the fuel gets distributed evenly in the surge tank and also de-aerates de it. If the surge tank is picking up any bubbles, the bubbles get separated out there. This is the uh, top plate. It replaces the top plate of the RX-7 fuel tank. It's made out of billet aluminum. It has the hangers for up to three pumps. There's this manifold that uh, you can attach all the pumps to. Uh, you can run one or as many as three for a real high horsepower application. So um, all of the pumps go into this clean manifold. No hoses, no nothing, no tangling, nothing to leak. And it can go out through this AN fitting to your fuel rail. Uh, nice, clean, nothing to leak or mess up. On the bottom, there's this uh, fuel screen. Uh, it has a stainless filter on the bottom, and there's also locations for all three pumps to pick up there. That's a cool feature. It's not that cheap, cheesy nylon mesh that messes up after a while. All, all your wiring that's inside the tank, it's uh, better than OEM grade with Teflon insulation. It's totally impervious to gasoline or any exotic fuel. If you want to run E85 or methanol or whatever, it's not going to mess these up. So you don't have to worry about any electrical issues. Uh, the same thing with the uh, terminals. It uses stainless uh, terminals to pass through the plate. Totally serviceable. Uh, they're sealed um, against all exotic fuels, so alcohol, methanol, whatever. It won't cause any leaks. You can use uh, ring terminals for your p power and grounds for your pump. It's a totally solid electrical connection, uh, l really low resistance and um, super clean. There's nylon acorn nuts that go on top of these as well to prevent uh, any kind of short circuiting by anything that could fall across the top. It's a very clean, very simple setup. As I mentioned before, uh, your fuel to your rail is AN. 
So uh, you don't have to worry about any kind of leaks or uh, having to get AN adapters. Of course, you could get a, a AN to a regular hose adapter too if you wanted to just run your rubber hoses. Uh, your return line is also AN, and uh, it, the return fuel dumps right into the surge tank and it goes through this diffuser, just like the feed, and it deaerates the fuel. Everything's nice, clean, sanitary, drops right in the tank. Um, what I really like about this setup is um, a lot of people run an external uh, surge tank, so the lift pump actually pumps fuel out of the fuel cell or fuel tank into an external tank that's mounted somewhere in the car, with, uh, which goes to the high pressure pumps then the fuel rail. That works really good to prevent sloshing but it's a big source of leaks and uh, possible, uh, possible uh, fuel for fire in the case of, the ac of an accident. Now, I was just involved in helping out another driver that was in an accident, and uh, the car got really distorted in the crash, so the lines uh, to the surge tank separated, and all the fuel that was in the surge tank went all over the place. And, it was really, really a lot of luck that there was no huge fire involved. And uh, that's one of the reasons why um, surge tanks that are internal to your gas tank or fuel cell are better, at least in my opinion. Uh, safety is a big part of it. Now, um, so we looked at the, uh, the meat of the system, the bracket baffle for the lift pump and the uh, surge tank and high pressure pump assembly. Um, to do a clean job of uh, setting up your fuel system, radium gives you other parts that makes it easy. Um, what we have here is the uh, fuel feed, which includes um, some really high quality line that's, uh, you know, it's a synthetic lining, so it, it's compatible with exotic fuels. It already has a Crimpton AN fitting that goes uh, right up to the uh, surge tank. It has radium's uh, microglass filter and uh, bracket and all the other fittings that you need to make the installation really easy. It's a no-brainer. Everybody's so lucky. Back in the day, we had to make all this stuff ourselves. And if you're lazy, it didn't come out too good. But this is nice, easy, simple, and safe. No fabrication. Same thing with the pump wiring. Now, um, a lot of people try to hook up their high pressure pumps to the stock wires, but the problem with that is it's usually a thin gauge wire, a lot of resistance, you lose a lot of voltage drop from your battery to the switch all the way to the fuel tank, and with a high pressure pump that draws a lot of power, everything gets hot, your pump doesn't get the full power it needs to produce the flow. So uh, Radium has made this simple. They have come up with a pump wiring kit that has everything you need. Um, heavy gauge wire that goes all the way to your, uh, to your power source, uh, fuses, a relay for the pump, um, and then all the uh, terminals and everything. These are all the ring terminals that uh, work with the surge tank. You know, everything you need's here. There's no excuse not to do it right. Um, you could actually probably run the lift pump with the stock OEM wiring since it doesn't have such a heavy load. But on this car, we have two of these kits. We're just going to do both, both pumps with the cool stuff. Finally, uh, it's uh, all about the fuel pumps. So uh, the radium kit gives you several uh, popular wall barrel pumps that you can choose from uh, or uh, AEM fuel pumps. And then in the instructions, there's a list of compatible fuel pumps that drop right in. Uh, we're going to be using uh, this AEM pump. It's a nice compact unit. It's uh, E85 and alcohol compatible, so you don't have to worry about it burning up if you're running exotic fuel. And uh, it puts out 340 liters, liters per hour. Uh, it has a really a lot of output in this really small package. It's pretty impressive. Um, that's more than enough to fee feed our uh, relatively stock LS3. Um, if we're going to go to more power adders and things like that later, we can easily add uh, two more pumps and get all the capacity to make well over 1,000 horsepower, uh, even on alcohol. So 
Radium has made this whole job a lot easier, and uh, everything's just a matter of bolting it in now. No fabrication. Now that we know the details of what is included in the Radium Engineering Fuel Hanger Search Tank Kit for the FDRX7, now we're going to start getting into more of the installation of it and show you guys what we do here at Moto IQ Garage. Now, for some of you that don't know, here at the Moto IQ Garage, we're now providing high performance services as well as race prep. So for those of you that may be interested in the Moto IQ Garage, either building your engine or setting up your vehicle, or even doing a full installation of high performance brake kits or suspension parts, by all means, go to MotoIQ.com, click on the garage services link on the top left, and then just send us an email with your request. We're in Carson, California. I'm open Monday through Friday, and we can take care of all your high performance needs. So now, let's get into this installation. Our first step is to remove the car's interior to access the fuel pump cover. Next, remove the OEM fuel feed and return lines from the tank top plate. You might also want to move the fuel tank vent lines from the top plate to get them out of the way. Now remove the Phillips screws holding the top plate to the fuel tank. With the screws removed, the top plate can be lifted from the tank with the OEM fuel pump and fuel sending unit stuck underneath it. Unplug and remove the OEM fuel sender unit from the fuel pump hanger. This is the only OEM part that we'll be reusing, so set it aside where it won't get messed up. Remove the top plate gasket. You can reuse it, although since the FD is an old car, we recommend replacing it while you're in there. Now we need to prep radium engineering surge tank for installation. Remove the surge tank from the radium top plate. Now we need to configure the pump block for a single pump installation. Remove the fuel pump block from the radium top plate. Next remove the allen bolts holding the fuel pump block together. Now we install two block off plugs to close off the unused fuel pump ports. When installing the block off plugs, use a small amount of sealer to the plugs before you tighten them down. Once this is done, we can reassemble the block and reinstall it on top of the plate. Now we slide the supplied hose over the AM fuel pump pressure port. Once it's on there, we clamp it in place and slide it on the pump block, securing that in with a hose clamp at the same time. The fuel pump electrical connector is clicked in place to the radium pigtail and the ring connectors on the pigtail are attached to the terminals on the top plate. We're going to attach the pigtail harness for the lift pump to the top plate at this time as well. Now we're going to assemble the fuel pump hanger assembly and the pickup. The pump suction side is attached to the pickup base which is held to the pump block by three brackets. When this is assembled, the pickup screen is attached to the pickup base and the pump block is attached to the top plate. Now the surge tank is reattached to the top plate with the fuel pump in place. Next, the AEM lift pump is prepared by attaching the pickup screen to the pump inlet. The lift pump is positioned in the fuel tank baffle being held with hose clamps. Move the fuel pump up and down to get the lift pump pickup screen even with the bottom of the baffle, then tighten down the clamps. Install the fuel transfer hose to the lift pump. If the fit is very tight, a heat gun can be used to soften the hose so you can slip it over the fuel pump barb. Install a hose clamp and secure the hose. Next, cut the OEM connector off the fuel sending unit and replace it with the radium connector. Attach the fuel sending unit to the side of the radium surge tank and connect all the electrical plugs. Lower the lift pump and baffle into place within the stock tank. Attach the fuel transfer tube from the lift pump to the bottom of the surge tank. Connect the lift pump connector to the connector on the top plate. Slip the gasket over the top plate and lower the top plate down into the fuel tank. Attach the top plate to the fuel tank using the supplied allen bolts. Reattach the tank vent lines. Next, measure, cut the length and terminate the wires for the fuel pump and lift pump wire harness. Slip the OEM dust plug over the harness. We are using the stock return line but a larger feed line. Our return line was simply installed onto the fitting on the top plate. Our radium fuel filter was assembled and readied for installation. A larger fuel feed hose was measured for the top plate to the filter and the fittings installed. 
We installed our fuel filter to the cross member, but we had to move the car's Aki sump out of the way to fit it. Once installed, the fuel filter can be serviced without removing the Aki sump. Now our fuel feed line can be installed to the top plate. The wire harness can also be installed onto the top plate. Once the ring terminals are bolted down, put nylon terminal covers over all the ends to prevent any chance of something falling on the terminals and causing a short circuit. Thread the wire harness through the pump cover and put the dust plug in place, reinstalling the pump cover. The car's interior can now be reinstalled. Now our larger fuel line can be routed from the fuel filter up to the engine compartment and fuel rail. We ran our line along the OEM route. We removed the factory protective covers and zip tied the new line to the factory hard line. Then we reinstalled the covers over the new fuel line. Now we have a state-of-the-art fuel system in our FDRX7. So there you have it. The installation of the Radium Engineering Fuel Hanger Search Tank Kit for the FDRX7 is now complete. As you noticed, everything is very thorough. Everything is taken care of. All the parts that you needed are included, including relay kits, for example, for the fuel pumps that you're going to be wiring in. If you notice, the fuel pumps that we use for this setup are AEM Electronics E85 compatible pumps. You can find a link to that part in the description, as well as all the other parts from Radium Engineering that we used on this setup. We are all very impressed with the, with the contents of the kit. Again, it is very detailed and thorough. Everything that you need for the installation is included. And really, to be honest with you, if you're really looking for high performance without really needing to completely redo the interior of your vehicle, for example, this fits right inside of where the stock parts would fit. So there's no need to modify the height or anything in your trunk. This car is gonna look basically bone stock when we're done with it. The carpet's gonna fit and you can drive it on the track and never have to worry about fuel starvation. If you like these videos, please subscribe. We love to bring you more content and also be sure to check out MotoIQ.com for more high-tech articles and to get a little bit smarter.